Hi, my name is Albert, one of the co-founders of VectorShift. Today, we're going to talk about how to build a website chatbot using the VectorShift platform. Let's head out right in. We create a new pipeline. The structure of this chatbot pipeline is we're going to have a user message come in representing by an input node. The input node is going to query a knowledge base, in this case, about VectorShift, because we're going to build, as an example, a VectorShift chatbot. Then we're going to pass the related data to an LLM, which also gets the user question and chat memory. And LLM is going to be able to formulate an educated response based on the context that's received and then spit out the output. Let's go ahead and look into this. As I mentioned, the first node we're going to use is an input node. The input node represents the user question that is passed into the data of the pipeline. It's going to query a knowledge base. Let's go ahead and connect the knowledge base. We're going to create a knowledge base here called vector shift knowledge base. And we're going to add some data to it. In this case, I'm going to add some data about vector shift uh, through kind of the vector shift homepage. You can rescrape uh, the website if we choose at a certain frequency or scrape the sublinks through recursive URL. Let's add the website right here. It's added, let's go back to the pipeline page and into the pipeline that uh, we're working on. And we have the knowledge base already populated here. Let's go ahead to the LM node. Let's prompt the LM, you are a chatbot on VectorShift. You answer the question based on context, use conversation history when relevant. All right, let's talk about variables here. Variables in VectorShift represent data that flows between nodes. When the pipeline is run, the data from the connected node replaces the variables as you have defined it. Variables in VectorShift always begin and, and end with double curly braces. Variables have two parts, the node name, put a period, and then the output field. Node names are found at the top of each node. For example, input underscore zero, knowledge base underscore zero, open AI underscore zero. Output fields are found in the sidebar. For example, the input node or the user question in this case has only one output field, the text from the user message. The output field from the knowledge base reader has two output fields, the chunks, right? The, re the related data based on the user message and citation metadata, citation related data uh, that can be used to cite sources. The OpenAI uh, LM has four or five different output fields, you know, the number of tokens used, the response from the LLM, et cetera. Let's go ahead and create these variables. So we need to connect the user question or the input node. You can use double curly braces and we open a variable builder, which in the step one populates all the node names, automatically puts the period down and populates the output fields from the node. In this case, there's only one, which is text. Let's do the same thing for the knowledge base reader, double curly braces. We're going to select the knowledge base and chunks. Finally, we got to connect the conversation history. Double curly braces, chat memory, and memory. And finally, we're going to send the response of the LM back to the user. There we go. We have the pipeline built. User message comes in, queries the knowledge base. Three pieces of data are passed to the large language model, the message, the chunks, the chat memory, and then we pass the response back um, to the output. Let's do some cosmetic changes. I want to stream the text output so it looks more conversational. I'm going to show sources as well. I'm going to give my, my pipeline a name. I'm going to deploy changes, export as chatbot now. Now, um, I could change the cosmetics of the chatbot. You know, maybe I want to change, you know, the background color. Make sure to deploy every, every um, time you make a change. We can export. Here we automatically provide JavaScript code and iframe code so that you can directly embed it into your, your website just through copy and paste. Um, you can also put this chatbot into Slack through WhatsApp and SMS or call via API. 
Uh, let's just test it right here through our URL. Here, we can ask what is vector shift. And now that what is vector shift is querying the knowledge base, sending the data to the LLM, the large language model is, is responding and spitting out the output. We have citations, we have sources, and now you have a chatbot that sits on your data. Feel free to reach out with any questions. Always happy to help. Thank you very much.